First, I want to extend my heartful gratitude for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Uh, I will start with Subhash Sudhish, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, Ma'am Sudhish, Vice President of Innovation and Emerging Technologies at E+. Uh, we are a uh, system integrator and a reseller. Um, and our goal um, or our mission is to um, solve real world uh, business problems through innovative AI solutions, right? Our comprehensive uh, services include um, AI um, professional services, AI consulting, AI advanced support services, as well as we have a AI dev team which does AI ML research and build custom use cases for our customers. Excellent. Thank you, Sudhish. Thank you. Sai, if you can introduce yourself. Thank you, uh, Praveen, for having me here. Uh, at PayPal, uh, I manage, uh, operate uh, in global infrastructure platforms. PayPal operates in 200 different countries. We have 430 million consumers and merchants in the platform. And we process $1.4 trillion in a year. Wow. This requires uh, global infrastructure presence to serve our customers and provide PayPal experiences to everybody. So um, this year's focus has been you know, AI and security, as well as uh, providing uh, deployments of these applications across the board. That includes hybrid multi-cloud. Very good. Thank you, Sai. Alex, if you can introduce yourself, please, next. Thank you that I can part here of the session. Um, my name is Alexander Heine. I'm part of the Digital Rail Germany, so-called uh, Digitale Schiene Deutschland, um, of the company Deutsche Bahn. And we are responsible for um, providing the rail infrastructure in complete Germany. So 34,000 kilometers of track. Um, and for this, I'm the head of IT platforms and services and the necessary data platforms to yeah, research and operate at the end um, AI-based um, traffic, for example, to use it for capacity traffic management or for um, fully automated driving of trains. So Dish, <laughs> as a system integrator, what are the use cases you are seeing across different verticals? It's interesting to see how customers are bringing those problems to solve with AI has been very uh, rapid for the past 12 months, as we all know, right? So from the healthcare perspective, it's mostly medical imaging analysis, nurse scheduling, um, or some other use cases we hear. From a finance perspective, uh, fraud uh, detection, sentiment analysis, portfolio management, uh, or some of the use cases we see from a finance uh, vertical. Manufacturing, very interesting, mostly computer vision use cases, um, building predictive maintenance, uh, as well as uh, for customer service, as, uh, or some other use cases which we see from manufacturing side. Um, we also see a lot from legal. There is a lot of interest from legal use cases, which is uh, uh, mostly around, they have a lot of manual stuff which they do. Um, so it's mostly around uh, legal research, contract management lifecycle um, and whatnot. And um, from a, another vertical, which we are also seeing good amount of interest is around transportation and uh, uh, logistics, <coughs> where they are looking at mostly around predictive maintenance, supply chain uh, optimization, as well as tracking their shipping and whatnot, right? So that's uh, another area. Uh, the last one, which uh, we have few uh, inquiries is around education, right? For personal tutoring, automated uh, grading assistance, um, uh, and uh, optimizing uh, optimization of their admission uh, pro process and whatnot. So this is uh, a broad, broad spectrum. Uh, spectrum. Fortunately, we have two customers today which exactly fit the profile of verticals where you are seeing the AI explosion. Let me start with you, Sai, if you can share how are you using AI in your infrastructure? At PayPal, we've been using AI ML um, for a while now. It powers our risk and fraud protection, with generative AI being uh, additional capabilities that we are building. The best way for me to explain the use cases and how they fit in the profile. You know, this is a security and data strategy at the center of everything what we do. Yeah, yeah. And so you can plot a four dimensional graph if, if you can, quadrants. You know, the y axis being internal and external, x axis being helper functions and actionable things. 
you can move you can put all your use cases into these four quadrants oh i like it it's internal unique. yeah and helper internal actionable external helper functions external actionable based on your maturity model of uh, a data strategy and security strategy you can move around these use cases in solving it right so some of the examples of internal and external uh, internal and helper copilot use cases oh. right um and uh, internal and actionable is something like it's a very innovative way we are leveraging it you know um incident response and incident handling how you can reduce mean time to recovery and same goes by external helper we recently introduced uh, paypal assist uh, chatbot if you accessing paypal helper uh, helper page you can chat with uh, the ai bot powered by this generative ai engines and particularly fine tuned models uh, you know behind the scenes and then the last which is um, more uh, provocative as well as um, uh, somewhat uh, you have to have a maturity model to address external and actionable that's uh, you are taking action based on you know the your customer asking specific uh, you know act activities that requires the utmost utmost care and once you are ready with all the security aspects of it you can solve right so that's the way how i can describe uh, all the use cases in the universe particularly this ai bandwagon very good thank you thank you sai uh, over to you alex what are you seeing in the transportation industry we use for example ai um, for capacity traffic management optimization so uh, yeah. recalculating of the best way that a train can goes with all restrictions for example weather um, incidents or um different kinds of um yeah uh, requirements of a track and yeah, not every train can go to the special tracks and uh, this has a very big um a data amount is is needed to make here an ai prediction and for this use case for example we use reinforcement learning yeah, to find new ways to make uh to to use the capacity on the track much more better um and second use case is uh that we want to go from now now we developing goa two systems great of automation to um it means that we have train drivers that supervise the train yeah the train breaks and um yeah drives by by its own yeah but uh, and train driver must take over the control every time and our main vision is to have here a fully automated driving train that detects the environment by themselves and react in a right way so this is a classical the goa 4 um, approach that we try to implement here to to use it to um yeah to to use uh, automated train operating uh, trains in shunting areas for example to building new trains yeah to go to uh, um, distances uh, that normally uh, are not so attractive for our employees to go so moving on to our next topic um, all of us have choices right either we can build our own data center consume gpu as a service from the cloud or maybe a hybrid approach sai krishna i want to start with you what are you thinking in your organization at paypal we follow hybrid multi cloud deployment uh, that is primarily based on our data strategy you know for example the data which is required for uh, research and development that is currently um, hosted on on premise so we have workloads that are related to this research and development uh, which are which are residing on the on premise and when 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 it comes to the inference related those are deployed in cloud so we kind of like a building uh, this infrastructure to support all different kind of use cases today alex uh, uh, what is your strategy and if you also can share why did you choose that strategy with respect to on prem or cloud or hybrid and in dutch bahn we have um, the strategy that everything goes in the cloud yeah so this is the main strategy that we use ai use cases and all the functionality uh, with our preferred partners there yeah? um but we have very high um intensive data parts yeah so this means that our heavy heavy um data we must proceed or process this data 
very close to the data sources. And this is the reason why we also built up own AI data centers to pre-process the data very close to the track, but also to have central um, processing um, yeah, areas where we uh, consolidate all this uh, together and uh, have big data storage to, um, storages together with the AI fabric at the end. And um, one driver is also the data sovereignty that we uh, want to implement here. So we we generating new data. We want to exchange this openly with other industries yeah, to reinvent or to, to find new industries also that help us um, to um, develop a, here a new railway system at the end. And this was the reason that we built up um, own data centers. So we following here a um, hybrid approach. Um, it's driven by total cost of ownership. Yeah, it's also driven by the data management, data use cases that we have here in mind. Oh, thank you. So to summarize, um, choice of building your on-prem data center versus consuming it from the cloud depends on your latency requirement, data privacy, and also, as Alex said, maybe also the volume of the data you are consuming. Where is your data? Where is your data? Maybe right. where is your data? So right. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that brings to me uh, to the next topic um, with respect to how do you operationalize these on-prem data centers? These are not easy, right? As Sudhish, you were saying, the power, cooling, and aspects of uh, hosting these data centers is not easy. Maybe I'll start with you, Sudhish, if you can share your thoughts since you are building some of these data centers for your customers, what are you doing and how a company like Juniper can sure, help? Sure. So what we are, you know, when you look at this whole stack, right, like your DC stack is there, your compute network storage is there. Then on top of that, you have your operating tools, operational tools, like monitoring tools and whatnot. And here you also have this whole concept of ML stack, which is that PyTorch and whatnot. And above that, you have ML ops framework. It's a whole, like you said, it's not that, easy to manage, right? So, but the thing is, there are a lot of tools which is uh, uh, evolved and matured so that it's making easier for customers to build it like an AI private cloud and consume it, okay? Uh, again, we are going back to the previous discussion where we, where we were talking about, yeah, how do you um, um, manage the power and cooling? What is your skill set do you have internally? Always look at the cost analysis, but as you are looking at the cloud and the GPU demand and how much it's costing to run in cloud, um, it for variety of reasons, for variety of workload, like large distributor training and where your data is, data privacy, look into all those, customers want to run it. And where there are providers like us who can help them successfully not only build, also support them if, if that is needed. Yeah. Can you also elaborate on how um, a tools like Appstra, for example, and yeah. how we are auto-tuning the congestion has helped your customers? Oh, this is um, it's a, it's a one-hour topic if you want to get into that, right? But it's um, from a Juniper's point, I think in terms of not only building that Ethernet lossless fabric, um, as well as you have the whole you know, PFC, ETS, and uh, the advanced features, forwarding features as well within the uh, fabric, and on top of that, you also have this Appstra, which is like a multi-vendor sort of orchestration, automation, telemetry, awesome tool, right? So it, this absolutely helps the customer, removes a lot of operational pain to automate and whatnot. Great question you asked. I didn't point that, but it's fantastic that Juniper has this whole fabric, a fabric. On top of that, you have the uh, operational telemetry and visibility you provide through Appstra. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, thank you. No, I wanted, wanted to, to add, add something. One more. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Efficiency is one of the key factor that you wanted to pay attention. All workloads doesn't need even a full GPU. Makes sense. You know, particularly the Gen Correct. AI related workloads. Everybody doesn't need a Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah. Inference, inference yeah. mostly you don't need that. Yeah. The mm -hmm. big. So the efficiency play a huge role, and particularly not only not only utilization aspects of it. And uh, you know the power, everything goes along with it, right? So, uh, what we are looking at is a fraction, uh, particularly the smaller use cases, AI, ML. Uh, you don't need uh, that uh, heavy-duty full GPU. Leverage the fractioning technologies, and and that map it to your network fabric, which will bring out uh, uh, the connectivity easiness. This is somewhat uh, in the infancy how fractioning as well as uh, 
connecting to the network fabric and Praveen, I really look forward to Innovating together, innovate, together, together, with, together uh, Juniper, on that yeah. Right. So this is uh, this is one of the area which we are uh, paying very uh, deep attention, and infrastructure has to be ready for another 18 months, 22, 24 months ahead. Yeah. Right? So we are looking forward. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Sai Krishna. Maybe let me ask Alex any final thoughts or word of advice for the people who are building their on-prem data center with for the AI clusters what challenges or any advice from your learnings, what they can do, what they should not be doing, or what should they do or should not be doing? Yeah, uh, I, I think um, my, my lessons learned was um, that I need the data center where the energy is, yeah? So AI workloads are so heavy uh, energy consumption uh, that, that it is very hard, yeah? So, um, and also one big part is the connection to, to the network, yeah? So to the backbone network, yeah? To, Get the data inside of the data center. Yeah, to uh, yeah bring the data to to the to the nodes, bring this back to the um, yeah processing units. I think the network is the key. Yeah, the backbone network, also the communication to the in our case to the field elements. Yeah, outside um, to the edge cloud components. Yeah, to bring all this together is quite important. Um, and this is um, has something to do with data management. Yeah. So when when I would start now, I would say. Uh, define before I start a, a quite proper data management that is stable enough to survive also 5, 10, 20 years um, to, the, to survive also the, the data that I must handle at the end, that I must transfer everywhere and to implement a data life cycle that um, allows us also not to store everything, yeah, uh, but to store the right data at the end. Thank you. Uh, so, Subhash, yeah, yeah, want, so I yeah. just want to add one thing, right? When uh, when you are looking at um, building this uh, AI on-prem data center, depending on what workload you're going to run, make sure you have a, you know, um, like I said, space, cooling, all that should be taken care of. And also you partner with the right uh, provider to ensure that you have an end-to-end stack that can build Correct. and automate. And mm -hmm. observability is another key area which you want to look at where you can monitor different aspect of things. When it breaks, you should be alerted proactively and uh, have AI on, on top yeah, of that. To your point, we have our AI lab in Juniper, which you have seen. Yep. We are constantly seeing our GPUs are underutilized because something, sometimes something breaks, something doesn't work. Exactly. This is why Appstra and your whole stack uh, absolutely will help customers. Um, as well as I've seen your lab, fantastic lab. We have bought customers there. Uh, it's a big environment to run any sort of large training data uh, LLMs and validate some stuff. I've done that. It's a fantastic lab, uh, what they have. Thank you, Sudhish. Yep. With that great, side, part yeah. great partnering with uh, Juniper. Um, uh, my final thoughts are, you know, get your data strategy right. Get your st uh, security strategy right. And look at 18 to 24 months ahead. Where is your AI workloads are evolving? What is your infrastructure strategy uh, to support that particular growth. Right? So have this clarity, it will be good. Thank you. thank you. First of all, I want to thank you all for being a Juniper customer. Thank you for putting your trust in us and we are here to deliver. And this is a new journey. All of us are learning, but we are on for this game. Thank you again thank you. for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.